here at the FPA conference in Nashville, Tennessee, joined by Ed Jertsen with Mac Investment Securities out of Northfield, Illinois, but also past chairman of the FPA. Thanks for joining yes. us, we appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's been a great conference so far, but something that's been kind of bubbling up and it's been bubbling up for a while is, is the future of the, the, the labor or the fiduciary standard, the Department of Labor rule. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that's been a, a topic among uh, a lot of folks in the profession and outside, but I'm just wondering from your perspective, what do you think is going to happen? Well, the fiduciary rule has already been delayed. The, the serious implementation of that has already been delayed to 2019. And I think from a, from a practical perspective, the United States is kind of behind the world trend in terms of fiduciary. There's already countries that are well ahead of us. So it's more being politicized today than it is actually really focusing on who it's designed to help, which is ultimately the consumer. Right, the consumer obviously wants to know that the help that they're getting is unvarnished and they're getting true advice that is particular to them without anybody getting compensated for recommending a certain product. That makes complete sense. That said, we have the SEC and uh, on the one hand and the Department of Labor on the other who are both looking at the rule from different perspectives with planners in the middle and ultimately the consumer in the real squeeze there. Yes. Um, do your clients ask you about it? Is this something that comes up? I think what the Department of Labor rule did with all the press and all the media is really put that in the forefront of consumers' minds. They may not know the F word or fiduciary in terms of what it means, but they're starting to ask about it more and more, which is critical to keep that conversation going forward. So to have the best interest of the client first and foremost is difficult to argue, and when clients realize that that is the care that they're supposed to receive, that makes every everything a lot better. There's been a lot of talk about the different ways that, that consumers can evaluate advisors if and when this rule goes into effect. What's your perspective on the best ways for, for consumers to be able to evaluate advisors when choosing a planner? Sure, well the rule's already in effect. So that rule, when that's not delayed. Some of the technical parts of the rule's delayed. So that's sort of uh, uh, maybe new news to some of the advisors and the fact that they are fiduciaries now when dealing with qualified, you know, qualified accounts. But again, if you look at it from a consumer's perspective, it's a function of what are you expected when you walk into someone's office or when you're when you're engaging with them. When you walk into your doctor's office, you're not thinking, wow, do you have my best interest at heart or are you just trying to sell me a prescription? When you walk into an advisor's office, it's almost like the Wild West where where are you and where are we at in the process and are you looking after me or are you looking at maybe your revenue first and foremost from that perspective?